Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having another great day today. Well, today we're gonna to be going to the Tesla Supercharger. We're gonna be testing out a third party adapter just to see how it works. I'll be taking a road trip here soon. And I have not received my one from Rivian yet. I did get a, a email from them uh, just confirming if I still want it or not, which I did obviously it confirmed. So it's no telling how long it'll be before I get it. And I'm sure a lot of you are in the same situation. And I bought my Rivian about a year and a half ago, so uh, these things may be slow to roll out. So I'm gonna test this to see if it's a viable option. And right now my Rivian is preconditioning, and I have it set up for a Tesla supercharger, and it's only about uh, 19 miles away. Here's the adapter I'm gonna be testing, and this is the, uh, the Vortex plug in, by Electron. So right now I'm gonna head to the supercharger, and I'll see you all back a little later. Okay, I just reached the uh, Tesla supercharger, and I was able to find one uh, that has one of these uh, corner deals here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get out and uh, undo my adapter, and you're gonna see how this checks out. And so, uh, Here's the uh, supercharger right here, and this is the situation I have going on right here. Got my Rivian right here. And you see I had to park in like this, but you luckily you had this pull, pull through one. And so this should be a little helpful. And of course I am sticking out, but I'm not blocking uh, anyone right here. So this should still be helpful. And so let me get my Vortex out. Uh -huh. And let me see what we have here. Yeah, we have some instructions here. That's the right thing. And okay, and it's showing to first put the adapter in the vehicle before you uh, before you plug in. So plug the adapter into the EV port. And then it says press the NAX button on the adapter and insert the NAX supercharger handle into the NAX supercharger inlet on the adapter. Ensure secure insertion and check the EV display for successful connection. And it just shows how to remove the plug that you push this in. Let me go ahead and open this up. And so here's the Vortex plug. Looks pretty good. And I guess to remove it, you have to push this button in right here. And so that's what it looks like there. All righty. And so this step here, I'm gonna open up my charge port and open this up. And I'm gonna stick this in here. All right, that's step one. And then step two is to put the supercharger handle and then plug in. And there we go. Now I got, got the green light. Okay, let's go ahead and inside and see what we have. Yeah, right here, Sean, I'm getting 167 kilowatts. It's pretty darn good. That is pretty good. And this says my session ends in 14 minutes. And it's showing the uh, cost per kilowatt hour, uh, 51 cents. And of course, uh, the charge depends on the time of day. I think the, the cheapest charge is like, it's, I think it's after 11 o'clock. It's like from 11 to like 6 a.m. or something like that. It's like 27 cents per kilowatt hour. But yeah, so we're rocking and rolling right now. So it's looking pretty good. And so right now I'm floating around 168 kilowatt and I'm at a dollar and 53 cents. And so with this, I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was plug it in, which is awesome. No fooling around with any type of apps or anything like that. I'm going to get out and fill this uh, this adapter in a few just to see if it's, it's going to get high, but I doubt if it does in this short time frame, but I'll just check just in case. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy. Pretty darn easy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, charging session continue. Man, look, I'm up to 213 kilowatts. That is pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about this. So I'm not sure what my end state of charge is supposed to be, but we're gonna see how much you say I, I, my session ends in, in 13 minutes. I didn't even look and see how many, uh, what my percentage was before I got here. So yeah, it was my mistake. I should have checked that out. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're rocking at 214 kilowatts right now. 
and already it's putting in 7.2 kilowatt hours. So yeah, pretty happy about this. This is seamless. And we see this charging station is getting pretty full here. And like I said, luckily this, this spot was open. Otherwise I'd have been taking up two spots. And this is uh, the big drawback as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, the Tesla supercharger is not set up for other vehicles. It's set up for Teslas. A bunch of, I guess it has to be a black or white Tesla because all these Teslas on here are either black or white. But yeah, so so far looking good. And I'm at sitting at already put in 9.4 kilowatt hours. As far as this uh, Vortex, it would have been nice if it came with some type of carrying case or something, but but it didn't. And where I'm located right now is a Wally's, and obviously this is, this is pretty big. And yeah, it's a pretty big uh, gas station off the highway. And so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just let this run, and I'm going to go and uh, use the bathroom, take a bathroom break. This should be done by the time I get back. See y'all back a little later. One of the other things I just noticed is that they do have uh, a CCS charging station here. And this one actually has overhead cover. So that's interesting. So yeah, a lot better situation than Tesla, which is odd. So this is, I guess, Wally's uh, brand chargers. And CCS one, but they're only 60 kilowatts. So at least this one is, let me check this one out. Why used to? and this is 120 so yeah interesting overhead cover and everything and they have a uh, ccs one and uh and a uh, chadamo and as you can see right here this charging station is totally full which is not great and that one's empty so if it came down to it uh, i would be headed over to the ccs charger not this tesla one and you see you have a vehicle waiting right here. You see I added 30 kilowatt hours in that short period of time and it said I have six minutes left. But I don't need I don't need to charge my vehicle up anyway. But I'm still getting 144 kilowatt hours and 60% state of charge, which is pretty darn good in my opinion. So let me go ahead and unhook this. And as far as the directions are concerned, I'm supposed to I'm, let me stop the charging station first. So I'm going to stop this charging session. And we just stopped it. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the cable for the cut Tesla deal. Let's see here. So I have to push in this trigger and then take it out. So I have to push the trigger in and then remove this this trigger right here. And let me go ahead and put this up. What's that? What do you think Tesla access? Oh, uh, all Rivians have access to the Tesla supercharger. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. I bought Rivian stock, even though this is my fifth Tesla. Oh, uh, is it? Uh -huh. I lost a lot of money on Rivian, but. Oh, yeah, you probably did you know, in the beginning. You can probably pull that out now once you. Hmm? Once you can probably pull the connector out once you disconnect from the Tesla charger. Oh yeah, I mean this is a this is a special one. No, that what you mean this? No, this is not permanent. This is an adapter. That's really cool. So with the adapter I have to put it in first and then hook this up, so Yeah, I know. I've got an adapter for regular tissue. Oh, okay. Very cool. I'm gonna let you pull out the hole in here. I like the little I can just pull. Okay. Go. So I have to say the charging station uh, session looked pretty good. And you know, I'll just give my final thoughts here in a minute on uh, my experience with uh, using this, this adapter right here. This is a little warm, but hey, it, it did the job. Uh, so this was, it was relatively easy to remove the, uh, the NAX connector from this. Uh, pretty easy to hook up to, up to my vehicle. It seemed pretty sturdy. Um, did I try to pull it out? No, I wouldn't try that. I don't really think that's a realistic test. Uh, but yeah, so this this uh, definitely is a good option and obviously it works. And so this really came into handy and it happened to have it in my vehicle. And so uh, I'll put the link in the description uh, for this. Uh, you know, if you want to order one yourself, like I said, I highly recommend this. And it did an awesome job. Like I said, it's not even that hot. Uh, and it's, it's 90 degrees outside right now. So make sure you keep this. It should be a part of your EV essential items. If you're a Rivian owner or a Ford owner, and I know uh, 
GM and Chevy coming online. Make sure you order one of these uh, because it could be a, like a year or more before you get one. But that's all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me once again. And I can't wait to see you on the next video.